A very interesting video on the new concept car by Sherry. Um, so this one has a drag coefficient of less than 0.17, which is really, really impressive. Let's have a look at this video, see what we can spot. So this wind tunnel is a C-A-E-R-I in southwest China, uh, <clears throat> which we'll, we will see is featuring an open test section. This is smoke being released. This is, this is the open test section which is really interesting because you, re you reduce the wall effects and you reduce the uh, blockage ratio effects um, during testing, which gives you a more realistic um, output. We can see that there's a moving floor in between the wheels, so not a full moving floor, but in between the wheels, and then the wheels are there mounted. Let's have a look later on if they can actually rotate over their static. This is probably a place where they can, can rotate the wheels, even though in this video they're not actually rotating. If you go back just a little, what we can see is that the profile of the car is very sleek, so very smooth, um, no abrupt changes in curvature, and a very long, um, as, as of this midpoint all the way to the back, a very long and slender um, slant area to have that nice pressure recovery of the car. We can also see that the bottom here features this very uh, large extension of what we can call the diffuser um, to really gradually um, accelerate um, that flow underneath the car and push it back to reduce uh, the wake behind the car. Then what else we can see, so no fuss, no details, if you go back here just a little, you can see no door handles, um, everything is flush and nicely smooth. This is very interesting, this side opening here, it looks like a visual design element, but I think it's actually connected to the wheel well here of the rear wheels to release some of that high pressure air um, and kind of feed it into the wake. Let's have a look at that later on. Um, front of the car is very clean. Um, then let's continue. This is the back of the car. So at the end of this very long slant here at the rear, we have this sharp edge to force uh, flow separation there so that the air doesn't stick uh, to any rounded shapes at the rear of the car which is good at the front of the car. We have a very clean nose. So you see details like the lights, but they're all covered, so it seems, in one big uh, or multiple pieces of, of plexi or glass um, to have a very smooth uh, surface there, nothing to trip the flow at the front of the car. So very smooth, very clean. This is the top flow of the car, all nicely attached. Um, if you look at the front of the car, this one here, this looks like an air intake which connects to what I saw here at the rear of the car, what we discussed could be an outlet for the high pressure air of the wheels at the rear of the car. So very interesting. We also see this entry here, the front splitter. This looks like a <coughs> front splitter which is kind of angled um, to grab more air and then gradually at an angle push it underneath the car um, to get that nice underfloor aerodynamics going. We can see front wheel covers. Um, because wheels and rims are very bad for aerodynamics, so they've cleaned that up. Then this one is interesting. This is an, an air deflector ahead of the front wheel. So what it does is that instead of having the air hit the tire full on and get a lot of tire squish and tire uh, weight there, you push the air downward already so that it goes towards the ground without hitting the tire, reducing the wake around the tire uh, because there's less impact. I just wonder why they made an active element out of this. Why not leave this there um, all the time? Is it for ground clearance? Is it for other purposes? Um, I don't know. To be seen. We then look at the rest of the car. So here we have the front air curtain. This is air hitting the front bumper. And then this air is being channeled through this curtain and then accelerated across the front wheels to reduce the, let's say, mixing effect and turbulences and so on around the front wheel. Really interesting. We see this on a lot of cars. We've done this ourselves. Um, this is an, a close-up of the tire itself. So what I'm thinking is that tires themselves are very bad for aerodynamics, not just because they're exposed objects, but also because all of their threads and so on on the surface um, cause the air to separate um, instead of flowing nicely across the surface of the tire. Um, and as the tire rotates, you kind of grab air and, and take it along with you. So I'm thinking that because they're showing this, that they made like a very smooth tire surface. I don't know what this will do, do in terms of grip and safety on the road, but it looks to work on aerodynamic tires um, to reduce the, dare, the air drag around the tires. If we then continue the video, this is the extension of the rear the diffuser, let's say. So more surface and more guidance of the air before it actually ends up um, joining the air uh, coming on top of the car and via the sides of the car, um, which is really interesting to see, uh, to close that wake as much as possible. And then let's see for the rest of the video what else we can spot. So this is, an, again, a nice side view. Um, this looks like 
it's just one door, uh, which reduces, um, of course, all the geometries or the seams, uh, the body panels, the body gaps, uh, the gaps between the panels. And this one could be a ventilation of high pressure air of the front wheel well. I don't know if it's really connected, but that's what it looks like. And that's about it for this analysis of the car. So really impressive if that drag coefficient is through. It's really nice. Just wondering how much of it will be there of the 0 0.168 once they go to production. But this is very, very promising.